So Janine, given that there is likely a coming crisis and things are in fact likely to get worse than they currently are, can you give people some tips or pointers in regards to what preparations they should make? You've mentioned the possibility or the benefits of leaving the cities. Mm. Are there other things you could recommend or suggest? Mm. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> okay, so when we understand what's coming, and I'll talk about potentially what we're aware of will come. I can't say exactly what date or when precisely, although we have an indications things can, will begin or most likely will begin as early as September. So when we get an idea of what's coming, it'll help us to um, guide us in our decision making about how to prepare. So first of all, there's going to be a conflict over civil and religious freedom. Um, our civil freedoms are being stripped from us right now. And we need to, all of us, speak out, um, sh talk to people, everybody you meet, encourage people to um, be proactive, um, to continue to maintain friendships, to continue to connect with each other, um, not to allow this to separate and, and divide and conquer essentially is what's happening. Um, so keep the love, don't let the love disappear because that's what, that's what they're trying to do. Um, stick together, meet together, um, love each other, care about each other, care about your neighbours, your friends, your family, your loved ones, look out for each other. Um, people are struggling with depression, loss of jobs, loss of income, etc. So first thing. Second, I would encourage, uh, there is a book that was written by a woman who was given 2,000 visions and dreams about the time that we're in right now. Um, she was called by God to warn about the events that are happening right now. Her name is Ellen G. White and she wrote a book called Great Controversy but she's written, um, I don't know, over 100 books. Um, so there's many other books out there with more specific information but Great Controversy is a really good start. I encourage everybody to read the final chapters of Great Controversy to understand what's coming. So I'm going to highlight a few of them now just so you understand. So leading up to the final, this final crisis, which I expect to come from September through to early next year and mid next year, uh, we can expect ramped up disasters and calamities, um, so unnatural disasters, these are created disasters. <clears throat> um, US government employees are being warned about this beginning in September. Um, more uh, pandemics coming, um, hard lockdown coming, um, illness rampant. And so I encourage people to get onto a good diet, learn how to take care of yourself. Here's eight principles for health. So we call it New Start in an acronym. Um, N for nutrition, make sure you get all of your uh, minerals and vitamins, especially minerals, um, particularly calcium to keep your body alkaline. alkaline alkalinity will prevent most illness. Um, so exercise, E for exercise, um, W for water, um, at least two cups of water, sorry, two litres of water a day for a grown adult. Uh, if you're bigger, add a few extra. Um, drink your water in between meals um, and don't drink with your meals. It waters down the digestive juices, so that way it um, gives you good digestion. Um, and good digestion is good life. You know, if, you food, if you're getting all the nutrition from your food, you're well. So N-E-W, and then start. We have sunshine. Sunshine is absolutely essential, at least 15 minutes a day on the body um, to increase your vitamin D to um, support your body's immune system. Most people, who, so I listen to, one of my friends is an is a infectious disease specialist. He's an advisor on the covid um, issue down in the Albury region. He did a special presentation on it that I listened to and he said most people who die of pneumonia or of lung related conditions have no vitamin D in their body. So to prevent COVID-19, he was recommending, and I'm presenting what he was recommending, 15 minutes a day of sunshine, get that, those vitamin D levels up. <clears throat> Um, so we've got sunshine, then we've got tea. Tea is for temperance. That means not too much of anything, not too much of any good thing even. You can have too much of a good thing. So keep everything in an even balance. 
don't sit for too long get up and exercise don't you know if you've got plenty of good food don't eat too much you know just be um temperate is is a good way of putting it so sta air fresh air really important learning to do deep breathing learning to get the air the oxygen is um is vital and right now masks a lot of people may not recognize this but masks are reducing their oxygen content in our bodies down from 21 percent down to 19 even 17 percent which is a red alert level um, so what's happening people are breathing out into the mask if it's a really contained mask they've got they're breathing out carbon dioxide and then they're re-breathing in the carbon dioxide they're not getting enough oxygen and we need oxygen because oxygen is what our cells burn to create energy. Create, we create 48 ATP of energy um, from oxygen in our cells. Now what happens is if we don't get enough oxygen, our cells begin to become, they mutate and they become acidic. So when our cells become acidic, if we have a lot of sugar as well, sugar will make our body acidic too. So if our body becomes acidic, guess what? Our cells become cancerous. This is how cancer develops. So you need calcium to prevent cancer. You need to reduce sugar. And I would suggest reducing sugar to zero. Um, sugar kills the immune system. And... Um, Anyway, so we're just covering these things. We were up to uh, fresh air, getting that oxygen into our body is absolutely vital. Um, the next one is R for rest. Um, so getting plenty of um, sleep of the night. The hours before midnight are worth double the hours after midnight. So getting to bed early is really advisable. If you're under a lot of extra stress, sleep is great. It's a great way to restore and revive the body. And the last one is um, T, T for trust. So all relationships are built on trust. Um, and whenever a relationship reconciliation is in process, it's always about building trust. So God is the one person who we can trust. He's proven himself as trustworthy. So I encourage um, to establish a trusting relationship with God. There's a great little book called Steps to Christ that I encourage everybody to read and it helps you to develop trust, which helps to build relationships. Now here's one thing that most people don't realise. 80, 80 to 90% of all illness comes from breakdown of relationship because we were created for relationship. We were created for connection and communication is the tool by which we have relationship. And so... Um, you know, I encourage um, prayer. Prayer is a great way to build trust. And here's the other thing, is that God actually does speak to us. So people that I'm sharing this message with, I'm sharing about the way God is speaking to me. And he's speaking to me through the word. So when I pray, confess my sins, receive his forgiveness, it's something, it is a gift. It's a free gift. We can just reach out and accept it and just thank him for it. When we begin to praise, it says that he dwells in the praises of his people. I just opened up my Bible after that experience, after I prayed through the sanctuary, so the sanctuary, you can learn about the sanctuary model, out of court, in a court, most holy place. This is a method, God's teaching us how to worship him through this. But when I get to the most holy place in my worship experience and I open up the word, God will speak to me. And I know he's speaking to me because it's just touching right where I'm at and he comforts you. So it's so beautiful. So I encourage everyone to... Um, Read Steps to Christ, read Great Controversy, use these principles, new start, write them down um, about taking care. They're just basic principles. Another principle that's really important that we can add to that is um, um, earthing, staying connected to the earth because you get the electromagnetic frequencies that, um, that give us life and give us energy and that's really important too. Okay, some other more practical things that we can do. As we were talking about escaping the cities, I encourage people to get caravans. Um, with a caravan, people can be mobile. For example, they might find a safe place. They might go, oh, um, you know, they've been here for a few months. They don't like it. There's another reason they need to move somewhere else. So with a caravan, you've got a home, but the home's mobile. Um, if you get a caravan, I encourage you to get um, fold-up solar panels. They don't take up as much room. It's very hard to get solar panels fitted at the moment. Everybody's trying to do it. You might be able to get it done till December. Um, God is telling us through Zephaniah chapter 2, 
through Micah chapter 5 and through Jeremiah chapter 6. You can look them up, the very first verses in each of those chapters, to gather together. Gather together before the crisis happens because there is going to come a point at which we're going to have to flee. If, we're going to res if, we're going, if we want to preserve our humanity, if we want to res um, stay free from the vaccination that's going to turn everyone into cyborgs who are going to be connected to artificial intelligence, um, we're going to need one another's support. We need relationships. We need to do relationship building. A very stressful time is coming for everybody. So we need more than ever to um, lean on one another, um, work together, pull together. And um, we meet together every Sabbath, every Saturday, um, because as we've been sharing, um, I haven't shared this here, but I will share this. The seventh day Sabbath Saturday was given in Eden. Um, so it was given to Adam and Eve, and it was given before there ever was a Jew. So people think of the Sabbath in connection with Judaism, but it was given for all humanity. And it was given for relationship, which is really beautiful, because God is all about relationship. And he, I, you know, I've come to know Jesus as a party God. You know, he's a party man. He loves being around people. He loves enjoying people's company. And um, so this is what we do. We meet on Saturday, on the Sabbath, together for the whole day. And you find that it really picks you up. It, um, you don't feel lonely. It reduces depression. There's so many wonderful benefits to it. Um, so that passage that I just mentioned is in Genesis 2, 2 and 3, that the Sabbath was given in Eden. It was reaffirmed to the nation of Israel before the Ten Commandments were even given at Mount Sinai. So that's in Exodus 16, 4 to 30. And it was made for man. Jesus said it was made for mankind or for humanity, which is in Mark 2, verse 27. So it's not just for any exclusive group of people. It's for everybody. And so many people, I met with a whole group of people last night who are all just starting to keep Sabbath. And they're all just buzzing. They're just so excited um, just to have a, time, a special time where they can catch up with everybody that's dedicated for that and to meet with God. Um, it was to be kept after the resurrection, that's Matthew 24, 20, and it remains as a rest for God's people, Hebrews 4, 4 to 9. And it will be kept in the new earth. It's the seal of God's law and the sign that we are his people. So there you go, gather together. That's one way you can gather, gather together. But um, gather your family, gather your friends, gather your neighbours. And um, Jesus says, actually, when the crisis comes, to beforehand leave for the mountains. Now, the reason we're, we're understanding one reason for that right now is that government intel is indicating that weaponized meteors are coming. Okay, so unnatural disasters and calamities, pestilence, fake miracles are coming, fire from heaven, attacks on the cities. Um, there's going to be a call for the mark of the beast, which is the Sunday law. We have to recognize this is them imposing their mark of authority on everybody.